This video is brought to you by Sporlin. Quality, integrity, and tradition. Today's service call is on a heater that's not working. They actually have multiple heaters, but we're focusing on this one. This is their bar unit. The customer says that the regulars that come into the bar are complaining that it's always cold in there. So I go to the thermostat when I first got here and I turn the thermostat into heat mode and I come up onto the roof and the condenser fan motors are running. What's up with that, right? There's some issues here. I don't think that flex connector is enough to handle the 130,000 BTUs that this guy can, uh, I don't think that's sized right, okay? But we'll look into that. But let's start over here, okay? We come over here. We are in California, Southern California, so our heat load is not that big. Or our, you know, heat requirement is not that big. But I come up here, we're calling for Y1 and Y2. So we have a call for Y1 and Y2 at the board. You can see via those lights, it's kind of hard for the camera to see the LED lights. This guy should be running in heat. So I need to go back down to the thermostat and figure this out. Um, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and pull this guy. Well, no, I'm gonna leave that. Let's go downstairs to the stat and see what the stat says real quick. It was messed up, so we go into settings. And we go to system setup. That's why thermostat is wonky. And it's set up, It's it's got a mind of its own right now. It's set up as a heat pump, which uses the compressors in the unit as the heating source. Uh -huh. And that's not what kind of unit that is. So it's a non-heat pump. Um, and it is a gas heat. That's the problem, I bet. So we'll go up onto the roof and see if that fixes our problem. I'm telling you, those Lennox thermostats are my least favorite thermostats. I prefer the Honeywell Vision Pro ones or whatever. Compressors are not running anymore. We got a W1 call. It's in a delay right now. That's what it was. Okay, so at a minimum, they're getting a new thermostat. I had to go into the programming settings. This this unit was installed by other people, not me, but um, they've had it for a couple years and this has never been a problem before. Uh, my technicians are not getting in there changing the unit from gas heat to heat pump. The manager doesn't know how to get in that deep into the programming to change it. So at a minimum, they're getting a thermostat. We'll put a Honeywell Vision Pro on there. All right, it says morning warm up. The inducer just turned on. Should ignite in a minute. Combustion chambers right here. Let's have a look at what's going on. We'll inspect the unit in a minute. I also don't doubt that this unit has a uh, loose belt, dirty filters, all that good stuff. But let's just see what happens. We're firing. Just visually, the flame looks okay. Nice blue flame. Um, so we know it ignites. That doesn't mean a whole lot. Uh, I don't doubt that it's undersupplied on gas. But again, we don't have, I mean, it's the lows right now. Like we, it's hard to explain, but Southern California, it's cold, but it's not that cold. We like, we're right now, our lows are getting into like 35, 36, something like that. Maybe just barely below freezing 32, but it's not for very often. So Honestly, most of these units that I have, like if I set them for one stage heating, the customers would never even know. <laughs> Probably a good idea to disable second stage heating on a lot of our equipment. Surprisingly, the belt's tight. We're good on that. I don't see an issue with that. It's warm in here. Um, definitely can heat, uh, clean out the combustion area. Let's have a look at the filters. Filters look like they were just changed 1114. Let's have a look. I mean, they don't look that bad either. They're pretty clean. So yeah, we're not gonna have to change filters either. So we're gonna clean out the combustion area. Um, and uh, we're gonna go down and replace that thermostat. Now, here's the thing. Could it be that someone got into the thermostat? In theory, yes. It could have been that someone didn't program it right. But this restaurant, has had this AC for several years. They've never had this complaint before. So I don't think it was programmed wrong from install. Again, I didn't install this unit, someone else did. Uh, but it wasn't programmed wrong from install. 
because I know that this heater has worked previously. Um, it's a pretty deep level advanced setting that the customer has to get into. I trust this customer is not doing that, okay? They're not getting into it. Uh, I know everybody's saying, well, maybe they are, maybe they tried to watch a video. No, just trust me. I, I can't really go into details as to why I know that, but trust me, they're not getting into the, the thermostat settings. Um, so my logic is if they're not getting into there and I know my employees haven't been here in a long time, they would not be in there trying to reprogram that stat. Uh, for no reason and if they did have to reprogram it they would uh, talk to me you know so I know it's not my employees the biggest thing is is there something funky going on in the thermostat that changed the setting I don't know and I don't trust it and it's not worth a callback this customer just wants this fix and they want to be done with it now I'm not gonna be able to fix the gas line today I'm gonna bring that to their attention that's something that I highly suggest that we do fix correct that properly pipe it but that's not anything that I'm gonna change right now, okay? Uh, and that's it. So that's why I'm gonna change the thermostat because nobody's gotten in there to, to change the programming. So that means that there's gotta be something going on in the stat that caused it to do that. Power outage, I don't know, something funky happened. So we're gonna go ahead and change it, put a good stat that I like in there that'll work, in my opinion, better. Uh, another thing that I don't like about those Linux stats is you don't have the ability to program into the next day. And I was just discussing that with the manager. Uh, you have to stop at like 11.45 p.m. But these restaurants, they're a bar. They will sometimes go till 2, 3 in the morning, depending on the locations and, you know, the kind of business that they do. And it's a pain in the butt. Basically, the only way to program that thermostat to go into the next day is to start a new cycle at the next day. But it doesn't let you. There's going to be a half hour window of which we're not going to be able to turn it on. It's really weird and it's just dumb. I prefer... Like I said, the Honeywell ones, I can set it up to shut off at two in the morning the next day and it just works flawlessly. So that's another thing. Um, again, I don't like that stat and I've always wanted to change it, but I'm not just going out and changing it just because of the silly programming thing. I'm waiting for a time for it to become a problem and then we take that opportunity to go ahead and upgrade it to a thermostat that gives me the ability to run it a little bit better the way that I like to run it. The unit is set up and running again. Turned it back on. It's heating. Why or W1's calling. Uh, it does have an error code on there for an outdoor enthalpy sensor. That's pretty typical. The sensors inside that outside air eyebrow go bad. I'll look into that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and clean this guy out now. Uh, it is set up for single stage heat only, which is fine. Again, like I said, we don't need that much heat here. So single stage is going to be better than running both stages. Um, but I'll clean this out, verify everything's correct, and then uh, we'll check that enthalpy sensor too. All right, I do not have a combustion analyzer. I don't even own one. Probably should get one, but I just don't work on them enough really to justify it, but I guess that's no excuse. 
Let me know in the comments what combustion analyzer you use and what you think would work best for me working on package units. I'd love to do some research. I like new tools, so maybe I should look into this. But regardless, all that I can do is make sure the gas pressure is set correctly, inspect the flame, inspect the heat exchanger, okay? So in this case, um, I've zeroed out my manometer. Uh, let's see, we have it on water column. We're set up on the test port on the outlet and I've got the cover removed for the low fire uh, gas valve adjustment and we're gonna make sure that we're set accordingly. If we come into here, it looks like for low fire we should be set for 1.6. So I'm gonna make sure that's about where it's set. I'm just waiting for it to fire up. Um, and I mentioned that's all I can do. That's not all I can do. I can check temporize too. Uh, so we're gonna give it a minute, let it run for a minute, and then we're gonna check and see what our pressures are at. Looks like it says we should be about 1.6. We're currently at 2.4. We'll give it another second and then make necessary adjustments. Right. We're gonna go ahead and adjust just a little bit. And we're just adjusting it down a little bit. Baby steps here. Almost there. This thing was running a little rich, wasn't it? Just about there, what the recommended gas pressure is for low fire, which just says 1.6. Right about there. All right, now we're gonna monitor it for a bit. All right, this guy says temporize is 15 to 45 degrees. Um, so, 15 to 45 degrees we're running right now. We are right, we're at 14 degrees, 73 to 87. And outside air dampers closed, so we're not mixing outside air. I'm not too concerned with that. 14 degree temp rise, I'm happy with that. We're gonna keep it on single stage. Um, of course, I'd love to get a combustion analyzer and understand more about the fuel and oxygen and what's going on there, but like I said, I don't have one. So this is the best I can do. Um, indoor blow motor's tight, filters are clean, indoor blow motor belt is tight, so. That's I forgot about the outside air sensor, so I come inside the input information for outside air temp, we have a completely open sensor. That's my outside air sensor right there. Um, well, actually, that's my enthalpy sensor. Outside air sensor is actually up in the front of the unit. Let's scroll down now that I think about it. Oh, it says OE, I believe that's outdoor enthalpy. Huh, so I'm gonna change that guy right there. I'm pretty sure that's bad. We'll test it real quick. Pull the sensor out and the wire just comes with it. But the sensor I can see inside of it, back here, and there's a bunch of corrosion in there too. So we'll have to fix the wire connection right there. And then uh, also I'll still put a new sensor in there too. All right, got a new enthalpy sensor right here, okay? Um, I uh, verified that we're getting an enthalpy reading now, so OE it must mean outdoor enthalpy, okay? We still have a bad outdoor air sensor though, and that's not that same one. OAT is uh, outdoor temperature, and that on these Linux units is usually up here in the condenser. If you look right back in here, you're not gonna see it, but there's a sensor right in here. I need to get in there and have a look at that. Um, that I'm not gonna have and we'll have to order, but that shouldn't affect the operation of the unit at all, more or less for unit information troubleshooting. Um, that should be the only thing that that does. So I cut the existing sensor just to test it and we're reading 10K ohms. So I don't know if there's anything wrong with that sensor. We might have a wiring problem. All right, I wired the sensor back in, it's right over there. And I'm over here at the board, I found that outdoor air temperature sensor wiring harness, and I'm getting nothing. So we might have like a broken wire somewhere. This harness is going into this main one and we're looking for two purple wires. Come up here, it looks to be that they're right here, these two purple wires. So I guess the next best thing is to see if there's any connectors back in here interrupting the purple wire. So let's go over here. 
back in here maybe? Is there something? That's interesting. Look at that. It's always nice too. Get that clamps back on. But yeah, it's gotta be somewhere right in here. Something's going on. There's no, it doesn't seem like they're loose or broken. But I gotta find it. I don't know what these guys were thinking, but they've got this connector or this uh, bolt right here. It is not 7 16 it's not 3 8 it's got to be metric. What the heck? Why everything on this unit is standard except for these two. It's not that I hate metric, it's that, that all my tools are standard so why do I need a metric driver just for this? I get it when I'm working on a Japanese ice machine Hoshizaki that everything would be metric but not on an air conditioner where every other screw is standard except for these kind of silly but whatever it's just one of those days so this is stripped out if you look on the back side I kind of bent this forward it has a I don't know if I can show you guys or not it has a rubber fastener oh gosh it's not gonna focus is it there you go oh, just barely right there it's a rubber fastener so it's just spinning so I'm gonna try to get back there with some knippics, hold it, and then try to undo it from the front. Well, that's uh, something special, don't you think? It's a rubber, like, fastener. That bent out of the way. But uh, I opened this up to get back into here and check this out. That's why we got no sensor. That's the connector, right there. Pulled out or something, so I gotta get to the back side. I got this guy right here. I put two Wagos right there. I gotta get to the back side and find it and fasten it back in. I've never really paid attention enough to see this, but look at the micro channel, how it's coming out. There's several spots where it's, it's only slightly doing it down here. Well, that's interesting, huh? It's like, it's just the fins though. They're like pushing out, that's weird. Never really seen that before. All right, got the condenser all back together. I did not put this bottom fastener in because it's stripped, so. I'll just have to deal with it. It seems like it'll be fine. Um, I pulled the cover off. That way I can troubleshoot it. We need to put this guy back on. And then uh, turn this guy back on. So what we start up with. Before we were starting up with an error message. This is just normal operation really main menu enter data inputs outputs sensors local outside air temp 64 degrees that's accurate so okay cool well we fixed that problem too so now <laughs> we are officially done with the unit for now i'm going to recommend gas line upgrades for the customer and that kind of stuff but the unit is operational as best as possible Gonna give them the keys and uh, tell them to keep an eye on it. So that was an interesting one. Um, but I, I've had those thermostats do that weird stuff. I know there's gonna be a lot of people thinking that someone got in there and messed with it, but I'm telling you, they just do some weird things. So regardless, I used that opportunity to go ahead and change the thermostat to the Vision Pro 8000, which I find they work so much better. Also on a side note, why do they still say Honeywell? Why don't they just say Residio? Residio owns them now. They just have like a licensing agreement with Honeywell for so much time. I don't know. I don't get it. They're just like dragging that that transition on, but it's Residio thermostat now. Uh, they can only use, I think, the Honeywell home name, right? And that's why it's kind of confusing too, because that's a commercial stat, but it says Honeywell home on it. I'm like over that. Why doesn't it just say Residio or something and just be done with it? But regardless, that's just a rant that I go off on. So got the thermostat changed out back to the style that I like better. Uh, went through the operations, found an undersized gas line of which I'm talking with the customer about upgrading the gas line size to the proper size. Um, and then, then we can probably fire it back up with two stage heat, but I just don't want to do that when we have an undersized gas line. Uh, I'm very curious about your opinions on a combustion analyzer. Again, I don't use them that often and we don't have very much of a heating season. I don't do any boiler work or anything like that. Literally just package units is all that I do. So I'm really intrigued to know what your guys' recommendations are on a high quality commercial. Um, and you know me, I want very high quality, very accurate, 
um, you know, really, really uh, uh, quality meter is what I'd be interested in. So let me know. Let me know your, your opinions down in the comments. I'm really curious about that. But we didn't just stop there with the thermostat. We went through the rest of the unit. We found an outdoor enthalpy sensor that was bad. And then we found that the uh, outside air temperature sensor had a bad electrical connector. It had you know come apart or whatever. So we connected that back in and everything else was good on that unit. So I really appreciate you making it to the end of the video. Um, as we're coming up towards AHR, remember I will be at the AHR trade show here in uh, Chicago next week. It is currently January 13th. It is Saturday, January 13th. And this time next week, I will be getting ready to go to the airport and uh, heading out to Chicago. So I'll be at the AHR trade show, uh, be at the HVAC Tactical Awards on Sunday night, the trade show itself, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, pay attention to my social media. I'll be announcing the different places that I'll be. Um, I'll be spending a bunch of time on Monday uh, at the Parker Spoiling booth. I will be at the Refrigeration Technologies booth and the Heatcraft Refrigeration booth on Monday. Um, and then Tuesday again, Parker Spoiling booth. Um, so just follow my social media. I'll make an announcement where I'll be. Uh, make sure you stop me and say hi if you see me at the show. Uh, I will also be at the HVACR training symposium in Claremont, Florida that uh, HVAC school and Kalo services is putting on. Uh, those tickets are sold out though. Um, so if you already have a ticket, hope to see you there. If you don't, you can do the virtual tickets, but I will not be doing a presentation at the symposium. I want to make that clear. I'm just going as a guest so that way I can enjoy the show, meet everybody and uh, learn something. So hope to see you at both of those shows if you happen to make it there. Um, again, thanks so much for making it to the end of the video. If you're interested in supporting the channel, the easiest way to do so is simply watch the videos from beginning to end. That really is the easiest way. You can also support the channel via PayPal, Patreon, YouTube channel memberships. Um, also through truetechtools.com. Go to truetechtools.com. You find any tools that you like. Uh, you can use my offer code big picture one word you can get an 8% discount on majority of the items on their website at checkout and then I get a small commission from that so that's another great way to help support the channel and last but not least you can go to my website hvacrvideos.com where we have merchandise available including these hats beanies sweatshirts t-shirts all that good stuff so check it out at hvacrvideos.com thank you so very much and uh, we will catch you on the next one